Hey, what's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball all postseason long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. One, if you were the Dodgers, what kind of contract would you offer Chris Taylor this offseason? And how much do you think it's going to cost to keep him in Dodger blue? And three, do you consider him a must re-sign for the Dodgers? I want all your takes down below in the comment section. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. And a happy Oc Taylor, Dodgers Nation. Chris Taylor went off last night. He went four for five, had three home runs and six RBIs. It was a career night for CT3. He became the first player in league history to have three home runs in an elimination game. And that was just a spectacular performance by a player that has been in the zone in October. It was clutch Taylor in the wild card game when he had a walk-off shot to send the Dodgers to the NLDS. And then yesterday, facing elimination. He just put the team on his back once again, and we're never going to forget the night that he hit CT3 home runs. Uh-oh. Oh. That's deep left center. Chris Taylor. Not one, not two, but three. The Dodgers last night, they beat down the Braves, a final score of 11-2, to and they set a new postseason franchise record with 17 hits, and they matched their postseason franchise record with five home runs. We had two Pollo Pops last night, a multi-home run game for AJ, who got his first home run for the Dodgers in the postseason. The Dodgers bats, they just erupted last night. They were bullying the Braves pitchers. Look, here's the Dodgers offense versus the Braves pitchers last night. But it was a historic night. Last night, Chris Taylor, he joined an exclusive list of players with three home runs and four hits in a postseason game. You have Chris Taylor, Pablo Sandoval in 2012 World Series Game 1, Albert Pujols, 2011 World Series Game 3, Adam Kennedy, 2002 ALCS Game 5, and Bob Robertson, 1971 NLCS Game 2. So what a big night for Chris Taylor. And the question is, will the Dodgers re-sign him? Do you consider him a must-sign? Because he is going to be a free agent. His teammates have nicknamed him the Paper Chaser this year. At the White House CT, yeah, Paper Chaser. <laughs> Woo! Because this is platform season, and he's already accomplished quite a bit. He made the all-star team for the first time in his career, and he was outstanding for the Dodgers for the majority of this season. August, September, he did struggle. Before that home run he hit against the Cardinals in the wild card game, he was riding 8 for 72 slump before that bomb. He was also dealing with a neck injury. Looked like there could have been some fatigue, too. He was one of the most durable players for the Dodgers in 2021, filling in at so many different positions. But in the postseason, Chris Taylor, he's been in God mode. So far this postseason, he's slashing 364, 436, 818 with a 1254 OPS, four home runs, and two doubles. He's 12 for 33 in October. And can you believe it? He didn't even start game one of the NLDS. So it almost feels like he's this year's Corey Seager, especially after yesterday's heroics. Absolutely outstanding. And I'm going to tell you what I think it'll cost the Dodgers to re-sign Chris Taylor this offseason. But first, here's CT3 after the game talking about how locked in he is at the plate right now and what it's like to have a big moment like that at Dodgers stadium i was really i wasn't thinking too much you know I, i'm in a pretty good spot right now and uh when you're feeling good i think it's more just um you know just see the ball hit the ball oh uh, yeah um mechanically i'm in a good place and then um you know once you get a couple hits and uh, the confidence is there that's when everything just kind of comes together yeah um you know i've said it before uh, this is why you play the game um you know, when you look back on all the the years playing for the Dodgers, um, you know, it's all these um, big postseason games that are the most special to me. And, I, and um, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, that these are moments that we're going to be able to look back on for the, the rest of our lives. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty cool.
Now, as I was watching last game, after every single home run that Chris Taylor hit, the first thing that crossed my mind was, yeah, we're back in this. We're going to take this back to Atlanta and go to game six. Then after that, I started thinking, oh, no, he's going to get too expensive for the Dodgers. Every time he hits a home run, add another couple million to that contract, right? Well, let's talk about it. Will the Dodgers re-sign Chris Taylor? Is he a must-sign? How much will he cost? Well, let's take a look at his numbers first. So, with the Los Angeles Dodgers, six years, he's slashing 264, 341, 458 with a 799 OPS and a 113 OPS+. plus. He's hit 79 dingers, 25 triples, and 135 doubles with the Dodgers. His career high in home runs was 21 that he hit back in 2017. He hit 20 this year, and he's really positioned himself to get a big bag. Look, it's your platform season. You want to have a good year, and he definitely did have that. He made his first all-star team, and the first four months of the season, he was outstanding. He slashed 283, 375, 499, had a 137 WRC plus a 3.4 war. That was tied with Justin Turner, and the only Dodger to have more war on the team up until that point was Max Muncy. So he was carrying this team for long stretches this year, but then he started to struggle in August and September. August and September, he ends up slashing 184, 261, 293, and had a WRC plus of 53, had a negative .4 war, but as a whole, he ends up with a 113 WRC plus, a 3.1 war, and a lot of stuff to build upon. You made that all-star appearance. You've crushed it in the postseason. He's really set himself up for a big payday. Now, do the Dodgers back up the Brinks truck for Chris Taylor? Now, it's not just the offense that you consider. You also consider the positional versatility. He can play above average defense in the outfield, left field, center field. Also, he can get it done in the infield. Second base, shortstop. He's currently playing third base with Justin Turner out for the postseason. So, you know the Dodgers, they covet that positional versatility. They really see that as a big plus. And I think what it comes down to is what does Chris Taylor want? Does he want an opportunity to be an everyday player for another team where he is playing left field every day or something like that? Well, if you wanted that with the Dodgers, one thing they could consider would be trading A.J. Pollock. Now, I'm not advocating for this, but A.J. Pollock, he fell short of qualifying for that opt-out. It's going to be a very attractive deal, lots of value. If they wanted to move A.J. Pollock, they could do that. And if you're the Dodgers and it comes down to keeping A.J. Pollock and C.T. 3 and you have to ship away A.J. Pollock for one season to keep C.T. 3 for multiple years, I think that's something you might consider. But I think if you're the Dodgers, you try to keep them both because there's going to be playing time for Chris Taylor as a utility man because one, you have Justin Turner probably holding down that DH role. You're going to have the designated hitter in the National League, so you might see him playing third at times. Also, the outfield spots for A.J. Pollock if he's still there, and you know they could potentially platoon him and Gavin Lux there playing second base, but I think it's going to be a big question. Do they want to sign him up as a super utility guy, and who do you look at? Do you look at a Ben Zobrist, a guy that was an elite utility man. Is that the main comp? I definitely think it is. And he signed a four-year $56 million deal with the Cubs back in 2015. Now, the market has changed and Zobris, he was a multi-time All-Star. He hit 28 bombs for the Rays back in 2009. So, of course, Zobris had better seasons offensively. But I think what Chris Taylor brings to this team is he brings that dependability, that stability. You know he's going to post. You know he's going to be available. And that is what he has been for his entire Dodgers career. No serious injuries for CT3. He's always a guy that you know is going to be ready when you need him most. And he showed that this season when the Dodgers had so many injuries across the board. You had Cody Bellinger. You had Corey Seager. You had Mookie Betts out during certain stretches. So, look, he's a guy that you want on your roster. And I think teams are going to come after him. I think he is going to have a robust market after this postseason. Now, what do I think the Dodgers should pay him? I think a sweet spot would be four years, seven. 75 million or five years, 85 million, something in that range that gives you that everyday player money, but then also allows you to have him and use him at different positions. I think his mentality, his demeanor, I think he'd be 
fine for a role where he knows he's going to get that playing time, but I don't think he's going to go out there and demand a certain position. I don't think he's going to say, hey, you better trade AJ Paul because I want to be your starting left fielder. I think Chris Taylor, he loves to win. He loves to be a part of this winning culture in Los Angeles. He knows that one way or another that he's going to get his playing time, whether it be through injuries or him just earning it throughout the season. You know he's an all-star at this point. So as long as you compensate him fairly, I think the Dodgers can bring him back. Now, is he a must sign? I think for the role that they want him to be, I do, because it does look like Zach McKinstry is going to be that guy. And I think that bringing Chris Taylor back as a part of this core in the future, I think that you got to do it. I mean, you look what he's been able to do in the postseason. Guys like that are hard to come by. Guys that have the pulse and the heartbeat to get it done during this month that we're calling Ock Taylor. So I want to see him back in Dodger Blue four years, 75 million. If you want to go up a year, maybe five years, 85 to 90 million, something in that range. But I think four years is the sweet spot for a guy like Chris Taylor. But that's just my initial number. We're going to be talking about this all off season long, but let me know down below in the comment section, what kind of contract would you offer CT3? Do you consider him a must sign? I want your takes down below in the comment section. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. For all the latest Dodgers Nation merch, head over to gearup.la, download the Dodgers Nation app. For the latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.